Hi, good morning. This is Nasser, and uh, today in this video, I'm going to show you how to install free SSL certificates from Let's Encrypt uh, on NGINX web server with Ubuntu 16.04 or Ubuntu 18.04 Linux distribution. And uh, we will also uh, see how to host multiple websites on a single cloud VPS and then install free SSL for all the websites that we have hosted on. Uh, that cloud VPS uh, basically this is uh, this video is uh, specifically for cloud VPS because uh, it requires a uh, uh, secure shell the SSH access to run some commands and to install let's encrypt certificate uh, uh, obtaining software which is also known as cert board uh, if you are running uh, a shared hosting web server or if you have your website on shared hosting you probably need to contact your web hosting service provider and ask them to provide you with a secure shell or SSH access uh, usually you don't get that access uh, by shared hosting service provider because uh, uh, there are so many other users who are using their website and they don't want to get other users affected uh, from any kind of work uh, or any kind of uh, software installation that you do so there is another way uh, or some of the provider do offer SSH access by some other way uh, or probably you can ask them to you know install SSL certificates on your behalf too, so they will run some commands uh, on the server for your particular account to have your websites uh, SSL enabled so in, in this post I've also mentioned the prerequisites that you should met uh, before installing SSL certificates so here are those uh, requirements uh, you must have an Ubuntu 16.04 or Ubuntu 18.04 operating system with SSH secure shell access uh, for this article or you know for this method to work and then you should have uh, on a domain your domain's A record which is a domain name you know it should resolve to the IP address of the cloud VPS server and also the domain's alias uh, which is also known as C name record uh, like www.domainname.com it should also resolve to the same IP address if you want the certificate to be issued for both the domain or if you are already accessing your website from both the name like you know if somebody types uh, example.com he gets to your website or even if somebody types www.example.com he gets to your website too so that's why we actually need both the record uh, DNS e record uh, for domain.com and www version of the domain.com should points to the IP address of your cloud VPS and then you should have the NGINX web server installed NGINX is uh, similar to Apache the, you know Apache and NGINX are both very famous NGINX is comparatively faster uh, and uh, more secure so NGINX uh, offer you to host several website and serve your website to visitors globally and then just in case if nginx is not installed on your server yet you can install it by running this command sudo apt install nginx and before installing you must update your server by running this command apt update uh, so those are the prerequisites and yes if you are using a windows operating system and you want to manage your server use from windows uh, because this is a cloud vps server and that's hosted somewhere else uh, you know host that's actually located physically or you know virtually at your hosting service providers premises so you need to access that server server you know remotely in order to access your cloud vps remotely you should have a SSH client software uh, for Windows Putty is a very famous client to VPS uh, you know client SSH software uh, you know this is a, a picture of Putty software and um, there is another one named uh, WinSCP so you could either install WinSCP or Putty on your Windows operating system to access cloud VPS server and then manage it or to install SSL certificate for it 
but if you are using a Mac you don't need any third-party software because Mac has an inbuilt uh, terminal uh, which you can use to you know access uh, your cloud VPS server and run cloud, you know commands uh, using SSH so those were some details uh, some some requirements that you should know about before installing the uh, you know multiple website and then issuing certificate to all the websites now uh, in this video we will be using DigitalOcean and Vultures platform to host two different websites uh, so you can host as many websites as you want as long as your server offer you know those option or as long as it can manage those many websites but you know it's a, it's a server with uh, two gigabyte of memory can host up to 100 websites easily uh, but yeah if one of the website has a lot of traffic uh, you should probably have a dedicated server for that but yes for some information website uh, you know website with wordpress uh, software or dynamic website with uh, you know like uh, thousands visitors daily you can have 50 60 such websites hosted on one single server uh, so this is my DigitalOcean account and uh, once you log in you get to the same interface uh, DigitalOcean is also offering a free hundred dollars credit uh, valid for two months so just in case if you want to test their system or, or if you want to feel the difference and see how faster they are you can use you know you can sign up with the referral link that i have pasted in the description of this video and you get a hundred dollars free credit for two months and you can deploy your server do, do test run and do several learning you know thing for learning purpose and educational so here is how we actually deploy a server on digitalocean uh, i'll click on the create button and then select droplets and it's gonna load those options for me okay now here it's uh, distribution this option these options are for a, a raw uh, operating system but we will be using one click app uh, because that saves a lot of time it install Linux NGINX Apache uh, you know in lamp case Linux in and lamp that is Linux NGINX MySQL and PHP software stack on 18.04 which is a 1 to 18.04 so I'll select this one and then I'll choose the server size which would be the lowest one five dollars per month with one gigabyte of uh, RAM 25 GB SSD uh, okay now I'll select the location the data center location uh, in my case uh, it would be it could be anything I'll just uh, leave San Francisco as it is and then uh, choose a host name you can leave it uh, as it is or you can just change the name of the host to your domain that you're gonna host here so my domain is hogdive.tk that's a domain that I have uh, taken freely from freenome.com for testing purpose so let's go and create this one I clicked on create button and it will take a minute or two and then mm, server will be ready to be you know, ready to use uh, similar steps or similar processes uh, uh, done using vultures platform if you have a vulture account you go here deploy a server and then you select the location of the data center or the server location first and select somewhere in the United States uh, I'm gonna leave Atlanta as it is and then in server type I'm gonna select application option and then lamp with Ubuntu 16.04 and then server size five dollars per month and in the host name I'll type uh, something let's say test dot so it's uh, another domain that I own so I'm installing the server now and let's say the distribution one here okay I think this one is almost ready and as soon as your server is installed deployed and is ready to use you will see a IP address here this is a unique public IP address assigned to your server you can access your server with this IP address from anywhere in the world I'll just copy this IP address and try to access it in the browser and see what happens so as soon as uh, nginx web server is installed it uh, host a default website in its document root folder 
where you can create separate the other folder to host multiple websites so I'll try to load this okay so this is a default website page please log in that just give you information log into your dropbox now let's see what happens with the vulture vulture is still installing so usually it takes just three to five minutes to install and you know have the server ready to be used all right so my server is ready here too and this is the IP address vulture has off assigned to my server I'll copy this and try to access it here okay. that IP address might have been used by someone before mm. I'll just close that so and I'll just I'll destroy this and then create another server again uh, destroy I think it will not let me destroy it uh, okay it's destroying now okay now let's uh, go to the digital machine one and uh, uh, what I will do uh, as per the prerequisites here I should have my domains a record pointed to the server's IP address so let's go to the domain record now I already have this test dot uh, you know this hogdaymedia.net domain which is hosted here on shark hosting cPanel and uh, but I am going to create a subdomain and that will be hosted here on DigitalVision's uh, cloud VPS so what I will do I will actually go to domain this uh, step is uh, this method is pretty much same with all the cPanel uh, so I'll go to the zoom zone editor and this will show me the domain all the domains that cPanel host uh, in my account so I only have one here right now so I'll click on the manage and then here you have to let's see if I already have anything okay so I'll click add record and then here I'll type test the name of the subdomain and then the IP address so the IP address is right here copy okay and add record all right so my domain subdomain test.hubdivemedia.net has been created now if i go here and try to access this let's see what happened all right so it's working it's opening the same digital visions uh, default website but i don't have I, I do not need to host just one site here I have to host one more to show you how we can host multiple websites so let me go to another domain I own one more domain here for testing purpose which I got from Freenom it offers a free domain so this is my account I go to services my domain and hog type dot ticket this is uh, one of the domain I'm using for testing I'll go to manage freenom DNS and here I'll change the IP okay not this one IP address I'll copy the IP address and go here paste it paste it here to save changes it's still moving okay record modified successfully now if I try to access hogtype.tk let's see what happens so this is test.hogtypemedia.net which points to the DigitalOcean's IP address which is 138.68.51.29 now I'll try to access my other domain hogtype.tk and let's see what happens May take some time for the DNS to be updated. Okay, let me refresh this page. 138 68 51 29. 138 68 51 29. The domain IP address is correct. Okay, let me just try that again. Type dot tk. Let me change the location of my VPN. Uh, connect. 
کردم So it usually take like uh, you know 15 okay it's already updated now so I see how type the TK loading the same page and if I open test dot hog dive media dot name it loads the same page this one here let me just reload it okay this one here and this one yeah. So we have two separate websites, two separate domain name hogdive.tk and then test.hogdivemedia.net but they both are actually uh, opening the same website. That's because we are not telling NGINX server to serve which website for which domain. Uh, serve one website for this domain and another for this domain. It's actually, um, you know, in, right now the setup that we have, we are just telling the domain registrar to point the domain name request to this IP address and this IP address is actually serving a default website which installed by default when the NGINX web server is uh, deployed or you know uh, server is installed so now the story you know the interesting part begins we have to log into our NGINX web server the Ubuntu uh, operating system and tell NGINX to serve different website for different domain name and this is what I have mentioned in this uh, article uh, so if you if you know if you want to know about these steps the process in detail you can go through this article here uh, I have put in the link of this URL in the description of the video now what I need to do uh, login to VPS this is the step one login to VPS so this is what we are going to do so I have the IP address here and I log into my VPS server so if you are using a Windows operating system you must have putty software downloaded putty can be downloaded from here putty.org okay so this is a SSH client software which use telnet uh, to log into different uh, machine remotely but uh, on Mac I already have a terminal app <coughs> sorry so in order to access uh, the server on, on terminal I'll type ssh root at IP address And the IP address is one thirty eight okay. Oh, sorry, my entire SSH root at Yeah, I should want to continue connecting. This is the default message that you get. Uh, I would say yes. Okay. So the root password now. Now this password should be sent to my email address. Okay. Let's see, is it for this one? One thirty-eight now. So I'll just. Reload. Okay, so this is the password here. Copy it. And I'll paste it right here. Okay, so password doesn't show up even a star or a stress line doesn't show up for the secure reason. I'll just hit enter and I should be logged in. I got permission denied. Let me try that again. 
Okay, I think I'm using a different password. 138. Okay. Make sure I have the right password. Okay, so I'm logged in by default. Uh, uh, DigitalOcean system asks you to change the password. So, changing your password, type the current Unix password. So, type this current password and then new password. Right, so I'm logged into my root uh, uh, on this uh, Ubuntu web server with nginx. Okay. Now what I need to do, I need to create two separate uh, uh, folder to host, uh, you know, to, to uh, host my different websites uh, because I have two domains here, so I need to have two separate folders for both the domains where I would be putting website files. For both the domains separately so let's see here uh, first of all in this example in this article I have uh, explained uh, uh, to you about uh, the default uh, server block uh, you know the place uh, or the configuration where nginx uh, uh, store the address of the default document root folder so everything is written in details in this article now let's go ahead and create this uh, uh, document root folder first so point your domain is what we have done so set up document root directory so this is my first domain uh, hogdive.tk so I'll create a directory for this domain first okay that's already created now now this is second one I'll copy all right so I have got two different uh, directories here if I go to cd slash var slash www and then I list the folder. I see the folder here, hogdive.tk, and then is test.hogdive.media.net. And this HTML one is the default one. If I go to HCD, HTML, first it should have index.html file. This is the file that is being served by typing the IP address. Now I have. Uh, my domain name uh, okay so this is uh, the directory where I would be uh, you know placing the file for hogtype.tk website and then this another directory uh, is where I would be putting website files for test.hogtypemedia.net so it's actually you know there is another directory inside them which I have created for uh, ease of access and for convenience so cd slash uh, tk now if I list content of this folder it shows HTML so HTML folder is where I would be putting in my files so let's uh, look at the next step now we need to create server block for each website so server block is diff, uh, uh, basically a directive uh, to tell nginx web server that this is the folder where you need to look for the files when somebody requests a domain name xyz so if a user type xyz.com from their browser any from anywhere in the world uh, he reaches to your web ser server now your web server decides which files or files out of which folder needs to be served when this domain is requested and this work is actually uh, 
done to NGI and X server blocks and uh, usually the server blocks are you know located uh, in this folder com.d or ngi next site enabled so in this example i have described you know the easiest way to create uh, server blocks in this folder com.d which is inside slash edc slash ngi next folder uh, so let's do it here now this is the uh, command that you need to run to create uh, the server block so I'm going to create the server block for the first domain hogtype.tk.com hogtype.tk so I'll just type this command here alright and what you have to paste this is the default template for server block file okay. I put it here okay so I've got the information written here and this is this server name which I, is telling nginx that this server block file belongs to this server name and this root directory root where www.hogtype.tk slash html is telling nginx to look for the website file for this domain here in this folder hogtype.tk slash html now I'll save this uh, file by pressing command and O okay. sorry it's control O and then control X for quit and now similarly I'll create the file for another domain the server block file for the, the second domain so this is the command here so you can change the name of the domain uh, as per your requirement or the name of your domain so here I'll paste the command and I'm gonna put the same server block file here and then change the domain name and the full the document root folder okay all right so this one is for test.hogdivemedia.net so first of all i need to change the server name here test dot media dot and then because it's a subdomain so we do not need this ww version here so I'll just re remove this one okay and then in the document root I need to change the domain uh, the folder name here the directory for this domain this will be the document uh, root directory and that is test dot media dot net slash html so I think that's all I needed to do and then I'll press command or to save this file hit enter and then command x to create so basically I have uh, told nginx to look for this folder here this is the default this is the folder that I created this folder here look for this folder when somebody request for test.hogtivemedia.net so the file the website file will be served out of this folder Okay. now we have the domain we have the uh, web, you know server blocks 
uh, both the domains are pointing to the DigitalOcean IP address and now I have the server block telling nginx to look for uh, look uh, to look into this particular folder when this particular domain is requested now the, those change you know those changes that I have made needs to become effective after restarting the ng nginx web server but before I restart the nginx web server I must check if the syntax and everything is correct so I'll type this command nginx minus t and it says everything is okay so I'll just restart the service okay. I'm sorry I have this command here this one is what we can draw okay so the nginx server is restarted now if i try to access this file let's see what happens uh, i need to change the location because it's using the dns cache let's connect and let's connect to a different location now I'm going to access hub type dot tk. Then stop. Let me clear the history. Uh, library history. Okay. Okay, let's try to access this now. Okay, so you see the hog type.tk is uh, forbidden because we do not have any file in the document or directory. Uh, it's, just, it's just blank, we just created it. Now, the same will happen with this domain test. Hog type media dot net. All right. Now, what we will be doing, we, you know, if if you have uh, uh, the website file, you can now go to the FTP uh, method uh, using FileZilla or Core FTP and upload the files for this website uh, in their respective uh, document or directory, which uh, we mentioned here which we which we created for them in this step this one here the var www slash hog type dot tk slash html uh, so what we will be doing here test we will be uh, putting a simple html file and uh, i've covered that too also here in this article okay so we're testing this is the default you know, this is a simple testing HTML file that we will create and that will be created here in the document root directory so I'll type sudo nano slash var slash www slash tk slash html slash now this will be the name of the file so by default in the index.html is uh, accessed and this is what I'm creating right now for testing I'll press the content here 
and I'll write something. My first hog dive dot tk website here. Okay. Now I'll press command control O save control X to quit. Now let's go to this location here. I created the file for this domain. If I re reload, okay. I see the can you know, domain I see the file the website is running so my nginx web server is working properly the server blocks that we created to host multiple website is working I have to just put in a file for this domain also so let's create the file for this domain also sudo nano so for this one I'll type sudo nano test dot hop type media dot net slash html slash index dot html and then I'll paste the same code here but I'll change the name of the domain so that we can distinguish it and the background color too so this is for test dot dive media dot net and let let's leave that as it is and just change the background color the body background color uh, let's do it here green and Control O, save. Control X to quit. Now, if I refresh this one here, I see what happened. Okay, so this one is for test.hogdivemedia.net and this one is for hogdive.tk. So we have two websites hosted on the same Cloud VPS server and both are running fine. Now is the main part. We need to go to SSL installation part we have to install SSL certificates for both the domain and this is the step 4 here uh, okay step 4 says uh, you, before you install SSL certifi certificate you must check if the firewall is enabling the SSL traffic the 443 port uh, SSL works on port number 443 of TCP so I need to make sure the status of the UFW firewall this is a default firewall that get installed during uh, the installation of lamp uh, in uh, digital ocean system so uh, let me check the status um, sudo UFW status okay I see the status active and I already have 443 allowed from anywhere so we are good to go we don't have to do anything here now we need to install let's encrypt client certboard so certboard is a small software client uh, provided by let's encrypt which uh, fetch the or you know the uh, something that works with let's encrypt it obtains the certificate verify if you own the domain and then install the certificate and make uh, important changes in the server blocks file so that your website is served over a uh, secure connection the SSL certificate is shown in to the browser and uh, also it is responsible for renewing your certificate renewing because uh, less encrypt uh, free SSL certificates are issued for 30 days uh, but they are free for lifetime so you get unlimited renewal it gets renewed automatically by this third port software so in order to install this we need to run these few commands just copy and paste it here Let me clear this screen
pressed and this is to update the software and then this is the second command and it asks uh, that this software installation is gonna take uh, zero byte of additional disk space uh, will be used uh, and that must be because the software is already installed but I'll just say yes why and then hit enter Now, third board. So this is exactly what you need to do. I think um, uh, DigitalOcean already have the software installed, so you do not need to run this uh, so command. Uh, you you can simply you know skip this part. Uh, you know step number one inside uh, under uh, obtaining and installing free SSL for NGINX. So in a step four, you can skip number one part and then move on to the second one but because we are already doing it now so let's finish this one uh, press enter to continue I'll just press enter okay and then so APT update and then install third board okay so we're good now and then this is the part that you need to do so now to install certificate for all the website that you have just type uh, this command sudo search bar nginx dash d then the name of followed by the domain name and dash d followed by another domain name so the other version which is also named as CNAME is treated as a domain name so that's why we have to mention that as well now I have a third domain to here so slash d test dot hub type media dot main so this is the complete command that I need to run there to get the certificate issued for all the domains so you need to do this every time you host a new domain on your cloud VPS or if you already have 10 15 domains hosted you can run this command in one go to install SSL for all these domains but yes you need to mention all the domain name each domain name should be mentioned in your command and I'll hit enter now this is the first time I'm installing so let's encrypt will create my profile here so I need to type my email address type dot com and I need to agree to the terms and condition and then would you be willing to share your email address with EEFF electronic frontier foundation I'll say no and now it's obtaining certificate you can see it here certificate is being obtained for all the domain deploying and now it says please choose whether or not to redirect HTTP traffic to HTTPS so this is important for SEO perspective as well as uh, uh, user experience for user experience and reputation of the company because if somebody by mistake types uh, www.yourwebsitename.com he can be served over non-SSL version also he may not see SSL so you must tell nginx server to redirect all the traffic to the secured one so I'll select option 2 here and then hit enter and congratulations your certificates have been installed now if you go here and just refresh this page 
because right now it's non secure page you see connection is not secure and it's actually on HTTP version but as soon as I refresh it will automatically be redirected to the secured version the SS you know HTTPS version of the website with SSL certificates let me show you that I'll click refresh and you see I got the SSL certificate information secured verified by let's encrypt and the same happens with this one too okay so this one is secured too now if you access it from anywhere you know no matter how you type it let's type www dot hog dive dot tk and see what happens and it opens the secured version of this website so in this video we have learned how to deploy a cloud VPS server on digital ocean and how to host multiple websites on the same cloud VPS server and then how to install and activate SSL a free let's encrypt SSL for all the domains that you have hosted on your cloud VPS server in the next video I will be you know showing you how to install PHP my admin to manage a dynamic website like uh, WordPress you know it's very important to have PHP my admin in case you want to migrate your website from shared hosting to a cloud VPS server so I'll be covering uh, that in my next video and if you like this video uh, I would appreciate please hit the uh, like button subscribe to my channel and share it with you know your friends who might be needing this help and uh, thanks for watching this video hope to share more interesting videos to you soon and bye bye take care